Shine with Kendall Lanique. Real, real talk for real people. Let's shine together. with Kendall Anise. I am your host, Kendall Anise. This is a life podcast. Life be life in, but I'm here to help you through it. As always, welcome in and tell a friend. And make sure you share this episode out because I know your friends and family are going through life too. This will bless them as well. All right, on to this week's episode of Shine with Kendall Anise. Hey y'all, welcome to Shine with Kendall and I'm so glad you are here. To all my riders who continue to ride with me each episode as we are in season 10, um, it means the world to me. I'm so appreciative of your presence here on this podcast. Um, thank you for listening to me. Thank you for listening through me and thank you for doing the work on yourself. It's all about education, elevation and entertainment. And season 10 is a monumental, it's a dime, right? A dime piece. So I wanted to focus on words and redefining the words that we speak in everyday language and really focus on the words so we can change our behaviors and our minds and transform what uh we have known and relearn and unlearn and remix you know i am the remix coach so i want to remix these words as a transformational life coach of 20 plus years and being a woman that's on a journey in life it's so important to be better each day and to keep god present in our lives and to be able to recognize when we're not using the words properly and do better. It's not about beating us up as people, right? But it's about learning each day to be better, to be brighter, to be more present, to be more cognizant of what we're saying and how we're living. So today's word in season 10, we're focusing on compassion. C-O-M-P-A-S-S-I-O-N. Well, Kendall, what the heck is compassion? Compassion is sympathetic pity, and let's not focus on the word pity, and concern for the suffering or, uh, or misfortunes, right? It's about recognizing the suffering of others and then take action to help. Compassion embodies a tangible expression of love, right? Compassion is the lifeline, y'all, to love. So we're going to be talking about it, but let's start with this week's life note. All right, it's time for this week's life note. Kendall, what is a life note? This is my first time listening and I want to know what a life note is. All right, y'all. So a life note is a quote, a saying, something that will carry us through this episode of Shine with Kendall and East this week, this month, and for the rest of your life. So let's talk about compassion. Until, and I, this is by, and I don't know who this person is, Bob Thurman, shout out to Bob Thurman. Until you have compa- real compassion, you cannot recognize love. Until you have real compassion, you cannot recognize love. Um, and then I have a quote from the Dalai Lama that says, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, pa- practice compassion. So happiness is wrapped up in compassion for others as well as ourselves. And we don't understand that as people. You know, you're thinking, oh, compassion, have compassion if something happens to someone or you want to show something for someone. You know what I mean? And people look at that as compassion, right? But it may not be compassion that you're showing. It may be something else or it may be selective. 
So that's what we're talking about today, y'all. We're talking about compassion. So how do we become more compassionate? Can you think of a time where you've been compassionate with someone? When's the last time you showed compassion? And I also want to talk about this because we're going to use this word too. But um, on a further episode, we're going to use the word empathy on a future episode. episode. But a lot of people get compassion and empathy mixed up. When I went, shout out to University of Baltimore, woo, 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 woo. I graduated as my uh, alma mater, but we had one of the first, and I've talked about this publicly before, but we've had one of, we were in actually the first, this was during Freddie Gray, the uprising of Freddie Gray in Baltimore. And um, we had the first class to ever be there on empathy. And when I talk about empathy, I'm going to talk about that class. It blows your mind um, and how we can show empathy. But oftentimes people get compassion, empathy mixed up. Now, while both, and this is from very uh, wellmind.com, I want to give the, the difference of it because I hear people like, well, I'm being empathetic. That's not compassion. Compassion is totally different. Listen to the words, compassion, empathy. You know, it's not a synonym as we talk about, you know, when we're in school, we learn cinnamon, synonym. Um, it's spelled differently, but means the same. No, this is not that. Compassion and empathy are totally different. While both involve responding to other people's emotions, they differ in focus. Last episode, we talked about focus. Uh, So if you haven't listened to last episode, we focused on the word for focus. But empathy is categorized by an awareness of other people's emotional experiences and an attempt to feel those same emotions from their perspective, right? That is empathy, putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Compassion is characterized by the desire to take action to help the other person. All right, I'm going to say that again because I really want you guys to understand. Both are responding to someone's emotions, right? But the focus is different. Empathy is characterized by an awareness of other people's emotional experiences, right? Slow stop. And then the attempt to feel those same emotions from their perspective. Put yourself in my shoes, right? When you hear people say that. So think about it. If someone has lost their grandmother, right? And someone else has not lost their grandmother, they can show compassion, but they can try to show empathy by putting yourself like, how would I feel If my grandmother passed away, they can try to put themselves in your shoes. That's the attempt. Compassion is the desire to take action to help the other person, right? So the empathy is trying to put yourself in the shoes when someone loses a a grandparent, a parent, or so on, right? But compassion is what can I do to be of service? I need to serve you. You know, I need to make sure I make the the arrangements or I'm there to take care of the children who come, you know, so you can focus on the adult things. I'm taking action to, to make sure I can get you out of bed because you can't get yourself out of bed. I'm showing compassion, taking action to help any way I can. If you don't know what to say, I'm here to serve you during this rough time. That's showing and implementing compassion. You guys get the difference? That's the difference, right? So there are three types of compassion, compassionate actions. And this is from Paul Leakman, right? Familiar compassion is compassion we have for our family members who are suffering. Familiar, they're a family. We know who they are. 
you know, we're linked to them. We're connected to them by blood, by love, by um, proximity. This is familiar compassion, y'all. So then we have familiar compassion, compassion for people we have some form of relationship with. It could be a coworker. It could be someone that you see at the, I don't even know if they still have them in some places, toll booths, right? It could be somebody that you see every day. It could be when you go get your morning coffee or back in the day when people used to get their newspaper from the newsstand. That's familiar. You don't really know them, but you got some kind of form of relationship, right? That's familiar compassion. Then you have stranger compassion, right? Self-explanatory compassion for people we do not know, right? And sometimes, let's keep it real, some people have compassion for people they don't know. When they're watching something on, on television or emotional movie or something, you don't know the people or watching a documentary, but you do have compassion. We Hopefully, we all do. I know that I have compassion for people I don't know, just hearing their story, scroll through social media, or watch, watching a documentary. And then also, you know, familiar, of course familiar, um, compassion, right? Someone that I might know in passing. If some, if I hear something, they say, oh yeah, such and such at the job, this happened. And I'm like, okay, I'm familiar with the person. I see them all the time. We don't really know each other, but I'm still going to be compassionate. If they say, even, you know, they, you know, got hit, they got hit playing baseball in the head, right? Somebody, it happened. And it's like, you still have compassion. Like, I'm not going to laugh like, dang, she got hit in the head with a baseball. No, I'm still going to have compassion because you don't know the effects of something like that. And familiar, like with, you know, family members going through certain things, they don't even have to be close family members, but, um, or they can be close, but you're going to have compassion. Hopefully, you know, I know some people like, I ain't got compassion for them. I don't know them people, or I don't even talk to that family member. I know some of y'all are saying that. And that's why I'm trying to redirect you to help you learn differently and unlearn some of that. It doesn't mean that you have to have a great relationship with whomever to have compassion. Because when you have compassion on others, God has compassion on you. And you heard it like being compassionate helps you just like it helps somebody else. You know, we often talk about forgiveness is not for you, it's for them. I mean, not for them, it's for you. That's the same when it comes to compassion, right? And you have different types of compassion. We talked about that. But then you also have different types of compassionate responses. And as I was doing my research, to really break this down, to help you guys understand, you know, you look at things differently. You have several kind of responses that you can have, even if it's a friend, even if it's a stranger, even if it's a family member, but we're going to take a quick break. And then I'm going to go through, uh, compassionate responses. And we're going to deep, deeper dive into compassion. Be right back. Hey everybody, this is Kendall Anise, the Remix Coach. I just want to remind you that I am a certified transformational life coach, healing and aging coach. Been doing this for over 20 years and I'm currently accepting new clients. For more information about my life coaching services, please visit KendallAnise.com. Now back to the show. This season of Shine with Kendall and Nisa is sponsored by my new book, Excuse Me, Your Unhealed is Showing, Healing Purposely and Aging Fearlessly. It's available on Amazon.com. Go cop that. Get one for you and a friend. Don't forget to leave a review. Now back to the show. All right, quick break. You heard what the lady Kendallini said. <laughs> I thank you and I thank you in advance. I'm greatly appreciative. Okay. Let's talk about some compassionate responses here. Um, empathetic compassion, right? We said the words are different, but you can still be empathetic within your compassion. So that's focusing on feeling the emotions experienced by the person who is suffering. 
So you're still going to try to feel, you know, feel for somebody. You know how people say, I feel for her. I feel for him. I feel for them. That's just what that is. Action compassion is focusing on the actions that attempt to relieve physical and emotional pain. Like, what can I do physically to help you? You know, can I get you an ice pack? Can I get you a Tylenol? Can I get, you You know, let me introduce you to this therapist or this life coach that maybe can help you through. That's helping that. Concern, compassion. Concern for the person who is suffering, empathizing, the compassionate person's motivation. It's a desire or an urge to try to help them alleviate you know, some of the the pain that they're going through. Aspirational compassionate is um, a compassion that is more cognitive, that emotional and aspirational and intentional. So when you think about compassion, right? It is an emotion. And people don't know it's, well... I can say this, it's not considered a, um, one of the main emotions, but it is an emotion because, you know, they say it's seven universal emotions, right? But it's not, but it's a, a different type of emotion that you have to have with compassion, right? And when you're compassionate with someone, it feels good. It feels good. It may not feel good in the moment, but it, it, it'll it make you feel better that you reached out in compassion. And it's definitely going to make that person feel better, even if the person doesn't know it or doesn't see it at the time. Because when you're going through it and people are compassionate, you remember it, you receive it, but it may not fully digest until the person's on the other side of whatever they're going through. Then they'll be like, you know what? I remember who was compassionate and who was kind to me, right? Because I'm sure you remember, right? So being compassionate um, is a way to allow people to feel happy, right? And it feels good to be helpful. It feels good to thank, you know, for someone to thank you. You know what? Thank you because you're not doing it to receive something back. You're doing it because of the kindness of your heart, right? So there are five C's of compassion. This is according to Roach in in my my research. In 1993, he developed the five C's, uh, or she developed, I don't know if Roach is a male or a female, but the five C's of compassion. Compassion, compassion, uh, competence, confidence, conscious, and commitment. Knowledge, skills, and experience make caring unique, he says. Here, I extended it further. Courage, culture, communication. So when you're talking about compassion, you have to have all of those words. You got to be courage. And then sometimes in a culture, you may not know, you have to be mindful. You do not know what to say, how to say it. And then the commitment to really see it and then communicate the compassion that you're trying to show. And compassion is one of the core values that I think will serve us good in life, right? Because it suspends the judgment, no matter what you feel or think, um, you can empathize and see someone else's perspective on something that may be totally different than your own. Because sometimes people, it's hard for someone to have compassion for someone over and over again if they see the person bumping their head up against the wall. Like if you're dating the same type of woman or the same type of man over and over again since 1992 or something like that, then they're like, it's hard for me to have compassion. But you have to understand people's growth spurts are different and people do things and behave in a certain way because that might be all they know 
or they haven't done the healing work or the growth work. So extending someone some grace, that's going to be one of our words during this season, grace, but extending someone grace and showing compassion anyway, that says more about you. Because even if you don't agree with someone, whatever had happened, right, you still can show compassion. Even in the Bible, it talks about, I have compassion. Um, in Matthew 15, 32, I have compassion, Jesus says, on the crowd because they have been with me now for three days and have nothing to eat. Right? So think about that. You're supporting somebody. Think about somebody. You helping somebody, you know, do something major. You're helping somebody do something major and y'all running around, y'all doing this, y'all doing that. And you, you just, whatever, you're just being of service to whoever. And then you realize I have not even eat. These people have been with me. I ain't fed the people. I haven't even thought about it. And it's like you, cause you might be in a certain mode like he was and not even realize. And he said, I am unwilling to send them away hungry lest they faint on the way. Like he is unwilling, like it's unacceptable. Like I got to feed these people, right? So it's less about you and more about them. Um, psychology today talks about compassion and being empathetic of a person's feelings, right? Um, when you relate to someone's situation and you want to help them, that's how they simply put compassion. It's when you relate to someone's situation and you want to help them, right? That's a simple way to do it, but Sometimes you may not relate, but that doesn't mean that you can't show compassion, right? Um, I want you guys to understand and talk to me. You know, you can always email me at candelanise at gmail.com, wherever you're listening to this podcast. If it's Apple Podcasts, I know you can rate. I know you're able to leave a message, a comment, please do so. And if you're listening on Spotify, wherever you're listening, because we're on Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, um, Amazon, Audible, Podcast Addict. It's so many. We're everywhere you can get your podcasts. I'm grateful to be on that platform. Been doing this thing for 10 seasons and... This is the work that I I love to do. You know what I mean? To really help you guys see things differently, right? So someone asked, what is the moral value of compassion? So I said, what is the moral value of compassion? And I, I found this through my research. A fitting response to various cases of suffering and misfortune. Yet contemporary theorists have rarely given it a sustained attention. The volume aims to fill in this gap by offering answers to the number one question surrounding emotions. So the moral psychology of compassion. What is the moral? Is it a virtue? Can we have too much compassion? How does compassion influence other mental states like our desires, our motivations, beliefs, and, and all of that? How can compassion influence the environment? All of these questions. Compassion, like other emotions, has facet, has different facets, right? So it's not going to be a one-stop shop how you show compassion and how someone else may show compassion because in your mind, in your heart, you may be showing compassion, right? And someone might be like, that's not showing compassion, but it may be to you. And as long as the other person feels good and receives it, and as long as it makes you feel good in your tummy, 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 that's all that matters. It's not up to anyone else and what they think about how you show compassion. Is fat, is um, compassion a form of kindness, what do you all think? Do you think it's being kind? How do you feel about compassion? Does that mean the same thing to you? Because sometimes people, just like people mix up empathy and compassion, 
Some people mix up kindness versus compassion. You can be kind, but not compassionate. Kindness is more of actions and, you know, the decision to, to make that cho- choice. So you can have kindness in compassion, but I don't believe you can have compassion in kindness. Because kindness is the cousin of compassion, right? And I think compassion is having a real strength to be able to give compassion to someone who is not feeling strong or their best or going through it. I think it's a strong strength. Even if you don't know the person, even if you don't like the person to have compassion, that's putting your big girl panties and your big boy boxers on to be like, I don't even like that person, but I can feel some compassion. That's being a great human being. You know, I can have compassion and understand. I have had compassion and understanding for people, right? That people like, ain't no way on God's green earth, you should have compassion for those people, that person, them, they, others. You shouldn't have after everything, after this, or after you saw this, or you should have, I'm like, absolutely. And that's thinking about through the years, even when you have friends, if they've done wrong, or if you have family members or in relationships, you'd be like, how can you still have compassion for them? Because that's the right thing to do. You know, we want to be and that right thing to do can get tricky because you don't want to do things just because it's the right thing to do. It has to also feel good. And if you're trying to strengthen your walk with God, you're trying to strengthen your walk with yourself, you're trying to be better, then there's not going to be bad that's going to come from showing compassion. I'm not saying that you have to be besties with the person. I'm not saying that you have to be in the relationship with the person. I'm not saying you're supposed to have a family dinner every week. I'm not saying that. But you can still show compassion and still have boundaries. And I think people don't understand that, right? But there's love and compassion. Just being a better human can make you feel better when it comes to, it's just about having the awareness and understanding someone else's suffering, even if you don't agree, just understanding that because we can have compassion all day long. We're watching a movie or documentary. We don't know the people. We like, dang, we seen their whole life play out in a documentary or the movie, but What do you think the tears are when it's sad or something happens? You're showing compassion, right? And that's an unconditional space where you can feel connected in that way. And maybe not connected to the person, but connected to the act. So what does compassionate love feel like? Verywellmind.com, I was looking at this and it says people who are compassionate in a compassionate love, because we haven't even gotten into relationships like romantic relationships where you want to show compassionate love, right? I, Because I know I need compassionate love. Don't you need compassionate love? You know, to have someone to have compassion for you. I know I want that. You know, even if you've never gotten compassionate love or you've never given compassionate love, it doesn't turn the desire off for you to have it. And that's even in a friendship, right? You want compat, you want your friends to show compassionate love to you and you want to show that to them. So in romantic love, it says people who are compassionate in a compassionate love still feel passionate about one another, but the intensity typically feels less overwhelming and urgent. The type of love involves caring deeply for the per- the other person, truly knowing the other individual and is committed to the other person through both good and bad times. What are the com- compar- uh, characteristics of compassionate love? When women uh, inspire.com says being in a compassionate love does not mean you're not as intensely in love. Instead, it's a different kind of love. Typically, compassionate love feels less urgent and overwhelming than a passionate kind. It involves genuinely knowing the other person, caring deeply for them and standing by 
their side. Is loving kindness the same as compassion as we talked? While loving kindness involves the motivation for happiness, compassion involves the motivation to reduce suffering. So that is the difference. It involves the motivation to help them reduce whatever. So you know how you'd be like, oh, I just want to jump through the screen and help them. You know, you don't know them. I just want to jump through this screen and help them. But I will say with psychology today, y'all know, if you listen to this podcast, you know, I love psychology today. Um, And with my degree in human services, there are so many different. And then being a certified life coach, like we, we talk about the psychology of people, right? So to have psychology today and they go deeper because I like to go deeper. There's a reason. There's a why for a lot of things that are not excuses. There are reasons and whys. Um, So in compassion is compassion good in a relationship. Research shows that compassionate people are happier, period. Couples that are compassionate with one another have more joy and understanding in their relationships. Compassion, a combination of empathy, concern, kindness, and consideration is the cornerstone for those wanting a fulfilled love life. Y'all in a relationship? Y'all wanting a relationship? All of that. I'm not in a relationship, right? There are so many people out there that are in a relationship and you may want to turn the relationship around or you might be looking to get into a new relationship. There are so many people listening to this podcast. You may be in a relationship. You may not. You want to get in one. You're just getting out. Whatever it is, we want to show compassion. So I want to read this again. Is compassion good in a relationship? Research shows that compassionate people are happier. Couples that are compassionate with one another have more joy and understanding in their relationships. Compassion, a combination of empathy, so important, concern, so important, kindness, so important, and lower consideration, so important, is a cornerstone for those wanting a fulfilled love life. So all you people that want a fulfilled love life, You have to start with compassion. Compassionate people are attractive. Compassionate people attract compassion and love, right? It's so important to give the gift of compassion. It goes beyond anything that you can purchase or buy someone. To show a little compassion in your life is is truly a gift to give and to receive. All right. So I want to, as we conclude, as always, I want to do some takeaways from today's show. All right. It's time for this week's gem takeaways from today's show. All right. Today's takeaway for me, and you can tell me, you know, through social media, hopefully through the podcast that you're listening to, well, through the the house you're listening to this podcast in, the house meaning Apple, Google Podcasts, because it's on there, Spotify, Spreaker, if you can leave a message, I really want to know your takeaways from today's show. But my takeaway is... That life is better when you show compassion and when you give compassion. That's where the love lies. That's my takeaway from today's show. Because when I'm doing this podcast with you all, I learn and relearn too. So I am the teacher. I am the professional. I am the expert. I am the life coach. But I am also and forever will be a student. That's why when I do the podcast, I give my professional and my personal views. And then I also seek psychology today and very well mine in different places. Because as I teach you, I always want to be a student in this life as well. Everybody, thank you so much for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and share 
this episode and all the episodes out. And if you missed some other episodes, go back. We've had 10 seasons. Spend some time in the car, in the gym, at home, in the bathroom, in the shower, wherever, on your walk, your exercise, so you can listen to these episodes. All right, y'all. I'm out. God bless y'all. Peace. As always, thank you for listening to Shine with Candela Nice. We are in season 10, y'all. Thank you for rolling with me the entire time. To all my loyal listeners, I thank you, thank you, thank you. All my new listeners, I hope you repeatedly come back each episode. This is a life podcast. I am so appreciative of everyone here. For more information about me, you can always visit CandelaNice.com. Follow me on all social media platforms at CandelaNice.com. And oh yeah, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for listening in. As always, thank you for listening in. Please tell a friend. God bless y'all. Peace.